Welcome. In the last video, we talked about um, on our journey to deriving the Black-Scholes equation, which again gives the valuation for call option. We talked about setting up a simple model of a stock in kind of statistical language, and we explored how um, the no arbitrage principle um, sort of forces certain conditions. So we're going to continue that discussion today. We're going to be talking about risk-neutral probability and um, in this kind of stock setting. Um, as we mentioned in previous videos, uh, this derivation is much helped by uh, the kind of proof and, and work done in Stephen Blight's Intro to Quantitative Finance that's linked in the description. Um, in addition, you can read the, um, you know, the channel version of this chapter. It's also linked in the description below, but let's get started with today's video. Um, so again, we said we have the stock price, S sub T, S is the, you know, stock, S sub T is the price of the time of stock T, you know, it goes up and down throughout time. Um, and specifically, we're saying that we have this stock that either goes up, uh, it, it has a U move or it has a D move from time T to time T plus one. Um, so, you know, at time T plus one, it's either it's going to be S sub T either times one plus U or times one plus D. Um, and again, these might not be both greater than zero or both less than zero. It might be on either side of zero. You know, you can think about like thinking about very narrow time increments and, you know, U and D are very small on either, whatever. But they, they, we just use U and D to be general. And we also um, introduced this concept of the risk-free rate. And the idea was if you borrow or lend at the risk-free rate, you're always going to have that, you know, one plus R that you either pay back or get back at, at the end. So we also showed via the no arbitrage principle that D is less than R is less than U. I've just done one plus D, uh, one plus R here, one plus U. Um, and today we are going to introduce the risk neutral um, probability, which we're going to call P star. Okay. So we're going to say the risk neutral probability P star is the probability of an up move. Okay. So we didn't do probabilities in the last section. We just said it goes up or it goes down. Now we're saying P star is the probability of going up. Similarly, one minus P star is probability of going down. Did I fit? Yes. So it goes up or it goes down, up with probability P star, down with probability one minus P star. Um, and specifically what makes P star uh, special is that the expected value of ST one given S T. So given where we are at ST, the expected value of ST plus one, there's only two ways that it can go. It can either go up and it's worth this with probability P star, or it goes down and it's worth this with probability one minus P star. So just by a simple, you know, kind of weighted average uh, law of total expectation, this is P star um, one plus U plus T plus Yes. Awesome. So this is just a simple way of average. Either goes up, but it's worth one plus u times st times p star, or, or it goes down. Um, it's worth one plus d s sub t um, times one minus one minus p star. Uh, so that's just the expectation. What's cool about the risk neutral probability is that it's it's the p that satisfies. It's the p that satisfies this equation. The piece, the probability that satisfies this equation. So the expectation of the stock at, at time t plus 1 is equal to if we just invested the amount of money that the stock is worth in the risk-free rate, and we get 1 plus r times st. So you can kind of see where the term risk-neutral comes from. If the stock has probability p star of going up, 1 minus p star of going down, in expectation on you know the expected value is that we make this amount of money, which it would be the same if, is if we were neutral to risk. If we didn't take risk and we just invested the risk-free rate, right? Risk-free, risk-neutral rate. So our expected value of the stock with this probability is equal to the amount of money we make with the risk-free rate. Um, so we, like we've just been talking about P star. We haven't actually like said what it is. We're just saying it's the P star that like solves this. Let's actually go ahead and solve for P star, right? So we have this equation, um, you know, P star, blah, 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 equals 1 plus r, st. Let's just rewrite this equation, but divide by st. All these terms have sts, so they kind of come out. So it's just p star 1 plus u, which is p star 1 plus 
plus b equals 1 plus r. Um, let's expand our terms. So p star plus u p star plus 1 plus b minus p star plus b p star equals r. OK, so I have a p plus p star minus p star that goes away. Uh, does anything else go away? I have a 1 on this side and a 1 on this side. That goes away. So we're left with u p star plus b plus p p star equals r. I'm going to subtract d from both sides. u p star plus b p star equals r minus d. I'm going to divide by, well, I'm going to factor out p star. So p star u plus d. And then I'm going to divide by u plus d. So p star equals r minus d. Make sure I got that right. <laughs> Never be too careful when checking your algebra. Yes. Wait. Ooh. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Made a one, one little mistake. You probably are screaming at me watching this because you noticed it already. We have the minus p star times d. This is, a, this is a minus, not a plus. So this is a minus. This is a minus. This is a minus, this is a minus. So if you caught that at home, nice job. Um, and you, you, uh, your prayers have been answered. OK, so this is our result. Um, remember, r and d and u and d are known. You know, you can imagine that r is 5%, d is 3%, u is 7%. Um, and what this says is that p star, you know, r minus d over u minus d, if the probability of the stock moving up or down equals this, then in expectation, right, this times 1 plus u, s sub t, plus 1 minus this times 1 plus d, s sub t, is going to equal 1 plus r, s sub d. It'll cancel, you know. We basically just did the inverse of that while solving for it. We plug this into this, p star, p star, um, we're going to get uh, 1 plus r, s sub t. So in expectation, if this is the probability of the stock going up, it's going to be equal to um, investing uh, just the S sub T dollars in the risk uh, free rate R. Um, so again, that is solving for P. We have in terms of R, D, U, and D. This is kind of a tricky term to get intuition around. Um, you know, if R is larger, P star is going to be larger. That kind of makes sense because if you can make more money by borrowing or by, by lending at the risk free rate, right? If you can make more money lending at the risk-free rate, the probability that the stock goes up is going to have to be higher because in expectation, you know, this in expectation, the stock has to equal 1 plus R S sub T. So if R is larger, you're going to make more money, which means the stock has to have a higher probability of going up if you want them to equal in expectation. So that's, you can kind of get some intuition around that result. But this is the risk-neutral paradigm. Um, it may not seem like much yet, but we're going to be using it for uh, kind of a lot as we go down the road in our proof of black holes. So we'll see you next time.